Greetings. Four USB bits and bobs from Amazon. First up, these USB 3 twin port headers. I bought them just to make it easy to test pins on USB cables and they should do the job nicely. It's only a 2mm pitch on these connectors though, not the 0.1 inch that you might expect. So it's uh, worth bearing in mind if you want if you bought one planning on using it with a breadboard. What will work on a breadboard though is these USB-C breakout boards. And these come with header pins that you can solder in if you need them. But if you want to use a cable or use the bare contacts, you can do that as well. Now having bought those, this turned up in a photo on a Facebook group I'm in. It's a USB cable tester from treedex.com. And once I remove the tab for the battery, I can plug a cable in both ends, like this one, and it will tell you which pins are wired through. In this case, we're ground, power, and the two data pins. I can do the same thing with a USB-C cable. And this is how the cable that comes with an Oculus Quest is wired. As you can see, it's, got the more, it's still got the same data pins. There's a CC2 connection connected through as well. Well, if I turn it upside down, it shows up as CC1. And the shield and obviously it's got all the power connections as well. Now although this is quite fancy it doesn't do anything fancy. It just applies power to all pins and shields at once and any connections that make it through to the other side light up the corresponding LEDs so you can determine whether a cable is actually wired for data or if it's just a charging cable. It doesn't pick up any crossed connections or any short circuits. It's not smart enough to be able to do that. It does have test points corresponding to every pin on these right down connections though. So you could use it as a breakout board for signal testing if you wanted to. Just don't plug anything into the left hand ports because everything here, including the shield, is all joined to one connection. It's all shorted together. It's a simple enough circuit, and as you can see, if there's nothing connected, it'll draw no power at all. So there's no need to use the power selection switch as an on-off switch, and there's something in your tool cases like to short some of the metal shields together. It's a nice looking thing though, and it's got a lot of information on the back. Although they have got a typo here, in that they have pins 2 and 3 the wrong way around on here, although they are wired correctly. Actually, pin 2 is D is D plus and connect to A6, and D minus is connected to address line A7. At least it's wired correctly. One thing it is missing though is rubber feet. So I'm going to stick some of them on right now. The fourth item I have here is a USB power meter. In a nice little case. Now you've seen me use my other power meter and people have complained about this one not being very easy to read on some of my other videos and that's because it's an edge lit LCD display in a tinted case. I actually cut the, the face of this last night so you can actually see it a lot clearer. But this one I have now has USB uh, A connections, USB C it's got a little connection for your micro USB as an input there with this little tab which converts the output like that. And unlike the other one, I think this is an OLED display. See so the phone is pulling 1.3 amps, which is interesting because this is only a one amp charger. It's also interesting that this is showing a lower voltage than that. Is that a calibration issue or is it a voltage drop issue? I think it's a bit of a voltage drop issue. You'll probably see that appearing a lot more 
in some of my, uh, my videos in future, at least the ones where I'm meddling around with USB stuff. It does do a lot more than just measure power consumption though. As you can see, I can push a button and we've got a, is that a voltage and current graph? I'm not sure. It's definitely graphing. Yeah, I think it's a voltage and current graph. That might be measuring stuff for data actually. It's, I don't know. I'll have to try that with a data device plugged into the laptop or something, see what it does. Then we've got a settings menu and you can turn the display off if you want to. Or we've got the voltage and current again with a few other, it's just a, a different layout of what you saw just now without the power. And lots of stuff. Voltages on the two D plus and D minus lines as well. So you can see what it's, if it's got voltages, set, if it's if it's set with resistors to certain voltages, it'll adjust the charge power. So then we've got a whole lot of stuff with Chinese and same thing again with English. And then we're back round again. Certainly got a lot more functionality than the old one did. Hope you like that. Thanks for watching.